GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First topic we're going over is Aaron Savali being traded to the Milwaukee Brewers and some myth pack for the league on that. After that, going over some reliever to starter transitions, guys who made the transition from a reliever to a starter in the offseason, how things are going. Grayson Rodriguez and his amazing season for the Baltimore Orioles, the Rockies trade deadline, and the Rookie of the Year leaderboard updated. So yeah, before we do all that, though, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read right in the air, please do the link, gsmcpodcast.net. You're ready to set the show, and it has been a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show for today. All right, so uh, first topic we're going over is, of course, Aaron Savali and him being traded to the Milwaukee Brewers. So let's get into it. Now, when I woke up this morning and did end up seeing this, I was pretty surprised. Um, I mean... I wasn't surprised to see a trade happen this early, especially with these two combinations of teams, the Brewers needed pitching. But I was surprised to see Savali get traded. Now, Savali was traded last year from Cleveland to Tampa Bay in a pretty significant deal, sending one of the top prospects in baseball, Colin Manzardo, to Cleveland for him. I love that deal for both sides. I thought Tampa got a really good pitcher. I thought Cleveland got a really good prospect. And now Tampa giving up on him only a year after they got him is pretty... It's pretty insane to me a little bit. I really did not expect this. I really did not think much of what would happen. But, I mean, wow, it's a big deal. I mean, I love the return now for Cleveland. I mean, trading Savali, a guy who would be dumped by his other team to get Manzardo, a top first base prospect in the league, is something that I really, really think the Guardians did well on. And, you know, Manzardo hasn't really proven himself yet to be an impact bat or the impact bat I think he could be. But at the same time, he still has that name appeal. He still has... You know, pedigree as a prospect, and I think they could have gotten a lot more for him other than Savali at this point if they didn't really keep on, they didn't really plan on making him long term. I think this is a fantastic trade for Cleveland last year, and yeah, it's kind of surprising that Tampa did give up on him this fast, and not only give up on him, but also give up on him for the price they did. They traded him to Milwaukee for a infield prospect who really is not mo- known much as a bat. It's more of a fielding first guy and wasn't really highly rated in their prospect system as well, so kind of a perplexing trade for the Rays in that regard trading for a guy with this, you know, as significant as Savali last, last deadline and just giving up on him a year later is pretty crazy to me. Now, for, for the Rays, again, thoughts on this trade, I do think it is a little weird. Again, you traded one of, your, one of the top prospects in baseball, maybe the top prospect in your system at that time, other than Junior, other than junior Camarino, of course, Cal Manzardo, for Savali. Manzardo, I've talked about it in the show a few different times. I love love this guy. I think his bat is incredible. I really do think at some point he is going to end up being a 30-plus home run bat in the major league consistently. Whenever he gets that down, I think that should be either the end, by uh, the end of this year or the start of next year. He should be that bat that I expect him to be. And yeah, I really love this trade for the Cleveland. And it's not just the fact of, uh, you know, Manzardo and who he is. I mean, uh, not just, you know, what what the Rays thought of him. If the Rays didn't think much of Manzardo, it made sense to trade him. I understand that. But trading him but trading him when he has the name value he has, when he has the value around the league he has to other teams who think he is better than what the Rays obviously perceived. For Savali, a guy who was good last year, you thought would probably be better, and then you dump him this year is kind of crazy to me. I just don't understand the thought process for the Rays here. And I know we always talk about don't make trades to the Rays. You know, they're going to fleece you, but... This seems like a bad trade, in my opinion. I don't know why the Rays did this uh, for both parts of it, trading Savali now and trading him la- trading for him last year for Manzardo. I think it was a misstep there, and I, I really don't agree with the decision-making. I, 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 again, I think it's very weird, and I just don't understand. But I'm going back to the Brewers now. Um, sorry, back to the Rays just for a second. I want to touch another point I forgot to mention. That is Shane Boz is coming back from injury. Of course, one of their top pitching prospects over the last few years really has never settled down in the big leagues suffered an injury um, before and is now coming back for it and should slot right into that rotation to slot right into the Savali part and as much as maybe that's a way of you know saying okay uh, Savali just didn't fit in this rotation anymore and we wanted to put Boz there I understand that but you could have kill, still kept Savali could have kept him as depth you could have slot him into another part of your rotation could have maybe had a six-man rotation easing in some of your guys who are coming back from injury like a Boz like a Jeffrey Spring sooner rather than later so Overall, I just don't get trading Savali. I don't think it was a great move by Cleveland, by Tampa. And overall, it just does not make a lot of sense to me. And yeah, kind of, I think, pretty bad process here by the Rays. Um, always, it's still a great franchise. Just I think this trade was a, was a loss here, and I, I don't agree with what they did. Going to the Milwaukee, though, I do like this trade a lot. Savali um, obviously has a lot of pedigree as a starting pitcher. Came over last year 
in that big trade in that big trade with uh, with Cleveland uh, to Tampa was very highly sought after at the deadline and this year with Tampa even though he has struggled five of his last seven starts he's gone five innings two runs or less so obviously the Brewers are hoping he can keep that and right now the Brewers really do not have much starting pitching I mean, you enter the season really thin at that position as well, with Colton Burns being traded, with Brandon Woodruff being out for the season. But losing Robert Gaster for the season, losing D.L. Hall to injury, losing Wade Miley to injury, it's become very, very thin. And, you know, you like Tobias Myers, what he's what he's brung in this rotation, but you need another guy, and I think getting Savali is a good low-risk uh, potential trade. He has a year and a half left on his contract, which again, another reason why the, I don't know why the Rays didn't keep him. You had a good amount of time to fix him, and if you're supposed to be this great organization that can fix anyone, I just don't really understand that. But So, I think getting this trade over off the Brewers is a positive. I do like it. You needed some pitching. Getting Savali, a veteran arm who's done better as of recently. Good depth for not that high of a price. We'll see if the Rays see the wing of that prospect. We don't, but I like this trade a lot for them. I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm if I'm them, I'm looking to get a lot more pitching at this trade deadline. Again, I think this Brewers team is genuinely very good. I was not high in them going into the season, but I'll, I'll be the first to admit they've proved me wrong. They have a lot of great um, you know, young, talented position players on this roster. They've really um, go, gone ahead of everyone else in that division. The bullpen is very nice. You're getting Devin Williams to come back soon. So a lot's going right for this Brewers team. I think potentially you could even get Brandon Woodruff back for the playoffs if you needed. I think that's more of a reach, but at the same time, I still think it's possible. So I think this Brewers team is very talented. I do think you should go all in for some kind of starting pitcher, whether it's a more of a rental piece like Jack Flaherty, maybe one of the Mets starters, or a long-term piece like Garrett Crochet from the White Sox. It'll be interesting to see what they do decide. And yeah, I think this Brewers team is good, but it'll be very interesting to see what they do decide at this, at this deadline. I mean, you have a lot of talented young players, and I think... This new core is starting. This new window is starting. And I thought it was closing last year, but with guys coming up like Sal Freelich, like Jackson Churio, William Contreras has started to hit amazing. Reese Hoskins has been a great signing. Christian Nelge has been fantastic for you this year. With these guys performing, I think the Brewers have found a new, um, a new part of their window extended. And if I'm them, I'm trying to add to that. I'm trying to get some more starting pitchers on this team. I think Savali was a good start of a buy low candidate, a guy you didn't really have to give much up to get, but has a big potential. But overall... Um, I am trying to get more people, and um, I think you really do need to add starting pitching for this roster because other than Freddie Peralta, I'd not, I would not feel very confident in what is going on with this team right now. So, Next, we have for the Rays, um, what is their outlook now? The Rays are going to be a very interesting team to track as we go into this deadline. I've talked about them before. There's a lot of interesting decisions that the Rays are going to have to end up making. First of all, um, with position players, are you going to end up trading some of your guys like Randy or Rosarena, Isaac Paredes? Um, some of these guys who are very good players maybe having some down seasons, really mainly for Randy. And are you going to go into more of a rebuilding, retooling situation? Are you going to trade some other pitchers? You know, um, are you going to trade uh, some of the guys that uh, you've known to be, you've known as a race fan for a long time? Are you going to trade P. Fairbanks? So, are you going to buy? Is that what you're going to do? I mean, I don't think they're buying at this point. They just traded Savali, so. It is going to be a very interesting decision-making time for the Rays at this deadline and seeing what does end up happening with them. There's a lot of things you have to decide here. And overall, if I'm a Rays fan, I, I am very interested in what, what they do. I think there's a lot of directions they could go, whether it is buying, whether it's selling. They've, it's no secret that they haven't had the greatest season this year. I mean, right now, you look at the ALEs currently, they're fourth in the division behind the Red Sox, low in the wild card, and... You have to say to yourself, I know where the Rays, I know how good we, we can be. Is it worth buying at this point? Are we really going to be a competitive team? I'm just not sure about that. So, yeah, if I'm a Rays fan, I'm definitely interested to see what is going to end up happening here with this team, what the decisions they make, what players are gone. If I was them, I would not really do anything. I'd just stand back, wait for everyone to get healthy and go for it next year. Um, I wouldn't trade Randy or Rosarena, especially when his value is the lowest it's ever been. I wouldn't trade Isaac Paredes because I think he's someone you build your franchise around. And right now, you lost your franchise icon and Wander Franco last year to out the field stuff. You need someone else to help build this around. And I would call up Junior Camarino. I'd get, I would get all the, you know, all the young talent I can up here and just try to try to find some identity because I think this team right now is really stuck in the water, stuck in the middle, not really knowing what is going on with them. So. Yeah, overall, I think that's really what I would do for the Rays, and they'll be a very, very interesting team to follow as we do get to this trade deadline. 
So that is our first segment here, talking about Aaron Savali being traded from the race to the Brewers. We'll be moving into our second segment here, which is going to be talking about reliever to starter transitions, guys who became who went from relievers to starters in um, in the offseason and just updates on how they're doing. So yeah, going over that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, Sam. Bye. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody? 